Hello, I'm Ding Ding. I'm going to talk about how to learn a concurrency control algorithm using Polyjuice. We all know ACID transaction is a core abstraction of databases because ACID transactions are isolated from one another. Users can write transactions logic without worrying about the interference of concurrent execution. Such convenience is provided by concurrency control algorithms, which ensures serializability in the face of concurrent execution. Concurrency control algorithm is crucial to the performance of multiple in-memory databases. Why? This is because at a high level, CC is like a scheduler. It controls how concurrent execution is allowed to interleave in order to guarantee serializability. The more interleavings the algorithm allows and the more efficient the interleavings, the better the performance. This is an example interleaving of two transactions by some concurrency control algorithm. Here's another interleaving of the same two transactions by a different algorithm. The second interleaving is more efficient because it allows for more parallel execution and inserts less weighting. Traditional concurrency control algorithms are fixed and oblivious to the actual workload. As a result, no single algorithm is the best. Instead, relative performances of different algorithms vary depending on the workload. This figure shows numbers from TPCC. We can see that IC3 and 2PL are better than OCC on the high contention, while OCC is the best when contention is low. Some recent works have tried to combine these fixed CC algorithms to achieve the best of all worlds. The ideas behind these works are similar. First, they would partition the workload according to different methods and then apply different CC algorithms for each partition. For example, Tabaldi partitions by transaction types and COMCC partitions by data. This federated approach has two problems. One, it puts burden on users to manually partition the workload. Two, because it uses one algorithm within each partition, the mixing of different algorithms is very cost-grained, and this limits their ability to exploit fine-grained workload characteristics to improve performance. Our goal is to model concurrency control as a learning task consisting of fine-grained actions. Inspired by reinforcement learning, we model a concurrency control algorithm as a policy function that maps each execution state to some action. For example, in this transaction, before reading X, it will check the policy to figure out which actions to take according to current state of execution. Since our goal is to optimize for the performance, and thus the learned actions don't ensure the serializability during execution. To ensure the correctness, we always validate the transaction before actually commit it to the database. We can represent a CC as a table in which each row represents the different states and each column represents the concurrency control actions to take. The key challenge is that how to design the state and the action space. Specifically, the design should be general enough to encode most existing CC algorithms. We categorize the concurrency control actions into several action types, and for each type, it can have different choices. What should constitute an execution state? Roughly speaking, our goal is to be able to differentiate states that require to take different concurrency control actions. In Polyjuice, the state consists of two parts. First, the type of transaction being executed and second, the data access of the transaction being executed. Now, suppose our workload consists of two types of transactions, type T1 and type T2, and each type of the transactions has two static code locations at which data accesses are made. We label each of the access locations with an integer identifier. This workload corresponds to a policy table with four rows. Each row enumerates a transaction type and access ID. 
At runtime, suppose a worker thread is executing a transaction of type T1 and about to make the first data access. The worker will first consult the policy table with the state value, which is type T1 and access 1. The corresponding row tells the worker which concurrency control actions to take. Suppose another worker is executing a transaction of type T2. Similarly, before each data access, it needs to first index into the CC policy table using the corresponding state. Now, let's look at the action space, which are columns of the CC policy table. When designing the action space, our goal is that these types of actions can exert different kinds of control on the interleaving of accesses. Also, we want to make sure that the action space encode most of existing CC algorithms. In our design, the action space contains four knobs of control. First, before executing the access, does the transaction need to wait for a while? If yes, how long the wait should be? Second, for a read operation, which versions of the data to read? Third, for a write operation, should it make the write visible to other transactions? And finally, should it validate after the access? For wait actions, let's look at the kind of choices taken by existing algorithms. First, one can choose not to wait before access at all. This is a choice of optimistic concurrency control. Alternatively, a transaction can choose to wait until all of its dependent transactions commit. This is a choice of two-phase locking. Lastly, some algorithms like IC3, CASRP, and DRP require a transaction to wait for the dependent transactions to finish execution up to some point. We want to support all these weight choices. Now, the challenge is how to realize them in a single implementation. We first start with the policy table design, which can support both weight commit and no weight. To illustrate what is a dependent transaction, we suppose for each data in the database, there is a per object access list tracks read writes of ongoing transactions. Each transaction also tracks its current dependencies during execution according to the access list of the data. After reading X, transaction 1 will append its access to data X. Then, transaction 2 performs a write on X and append itself to the access list of data X. At the same time, it sees that transaction 1 has accessed X before, and then transaction 2 will add transaction 1 into its dependency list. Remember, before each data access, one must consult the policy table to determine how much to wait. In this implementation, we have a wait action for each transaction type. Since this workload consists of two types, T1 and T2, the wait action should have two slots, one for T1 and another for T2. For now, our wait action has two choices, wait, which means to wait for the commit of all dependent transactions, and no wait, which to immediately perform the access without delay. This example policy chooses wait everywhere, just like what 2PL does. Therefore, transaction 2 needs to defer the execution of the next access until transaction 1 has been committed. Here, we show an example policy that chooses no wait everywhere, just like what OCC does. In this case, since the wait action is no wait, then transaction 2 can directly execute the second access without any waiting. Now, we try to enhance the implementation to support fine-grained waiting. To do this, we change the wait actions from a binary choice to an integer value choice. In this example policy here, 0 means no wait, 2 means wait until dependent transactions of type T1 have finished executing their second access. Under this policy, when transaction 2 consults the policy table for its second access, it will see that it should wait until transaction 1 finish access 2. 
For a read access, it can choose which version of the data to read. Polyjuice is a single version database which supports a transaction to read the latest committed version, which is also used by OCC. Polyjuice also supports a read access to read the latest published dirty version according to the CC policy. Reading dirty version is also widely used in the existing works such as IC3, CalSRP, and DRP. A write access in Polyjuice can choose either keep itself in the private buffer or publish the writes in buffer accumulatively. This also covers most of write actions in the existing works. For example, OCC keeps all its writes in its private buffer during the execution, while IC3 will accumulatively publish its writes at some points in the execution. Early validation also affects the interleaving, since it helps detect the conflict earlier. The CC policy in Polyjuice indicates whether to early validate after each access. To ensure the correctness, there is always a final validation prior to commit. Our validation protocol is based on Silo's protocol. Therefore, the action space of the policy table has four types of categories. Among them, read version, write visibility, and early validation have two choices, and the corresponding cells in the table are binary, while the cells of the weight action, which needs to specify weight until which access of the dependent transactions are filled with concrete numbers. For example, given this policy, before the transaction 1 of type T1 executes the second access, it doesn't need to wait for the other transactions of type T1 in its dependency list, but it needs to wait for all dependent transactions of type Tn to finish access 2. When performing the access, it will read the clean version, publish its write buffer, and validate after this access. The state and action space design can encode most existing CC algorithms and enable normal interleavings not permitted by existing CCs. Based on the learning framework, Polyjuice uses offline training to optimize policy for a given workload. It emulates the workload based on the trees and runs the workload with the actions specified in the policy to evaluate the performance of this CC policy. Polyjuice uses evolutionary algorithm to train for the optimal CC policy with the given workload. Generally, the EA agent evaluates the throughput of several CC candidates, selects some of them based on the performance, and output a new generation of CC policies into the next iteration. In the evaluation part, we mainly focus on the following two questions. First, can Polyjuice have better performance than existing works? And second, can Polyjuice find novel interleavings that are not covered by existing works? We choose TPCC as our benchmark and evaluate the performance of the existing CC algorithms and the learned policy of Polyjuice. The results shows that on the TPCC 48 thread one warehouse workload, which is high contention, Polyjuice achieves 45% improvement. On the moderate contention, the improvement of Polyjuice is 19%. We manually check the learned policy of Polyjuice. On the high contention, we find out that Polyjuice finds a novel interleaving which is not covered by the existing works and is crucial to the performance improvement. On the left is the interleaving of IC3, which performs the best among existing algorithms. The second rewrite access of payment is made to wait for the third access of new order. IC3 derives this weight relationship via static analysis. On the right, we have Polyjuice interleaving of the same two transactions. Visually, you can see that it is more efficient interleaving. One reason is that Polyjuice has learned to wait for an earlier access in new order. There are other intricate actions needed to support this earlier wait. We have a more detailed analysis in the paper. In conclusion, Polyjuice models CC as a learning task which can not only encode most of the existing CCs, but also allow new interleaving. Our evaluation shows that Polyjuice can outperform existing fixed and federated CCs. Thank you very much.